Welcome to the Parables of Jesus with Dr. Peter McLuhan. Our parable today is the wheat and the weeds. People love not only the miracles that Jesus performed, they love the stories that he told. The parables Jesus used were earthly stories with a heavenly meaning. Jesus used parables as a way of helping his listeners discover hidden thoughts and attitudes that needed to change. Last week, we explored the parable of the seeds. We learned that Jesus is the sower, and the word of God is the seed that he sows everywhere, every day. Jesus said, the seed is the word of God, Luke chapter 8 and verse 11. Jesus is a generous sower. He sows seeds in the hearts of people that are tender. He sows seed in the hearts of people who have openly rejected him. And the people who are the most receptive to the ideas that Jesus came to sow benefit the most from the sowed seeds that he sowed in their life. The parable of the seeds was followed by six more parables that Jesus told. And these parables are found in Matthew chapter 13. The next parable that Jesus told is called the parable of the wheat and the weeds. Jesus said the kingdom of God may be compared to a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while his men were sleeping, an enemy came and sowed weeds amongst the wheat and went away. And so the plants came up and bore grain. And when the weeds appeared also, the servant of the master of the house came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your fields? And how does it have weeds? And he said to them, An enemy has done this. So the servant said to him, then do you want us to go and to gather them? But he said, no, lest in gathering the weeds you root up the wheat along with it. Let both grow together until the harvest. And at the harvest time I'll tell the reapers, gather the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned and gather the wheat into my barn. Matthew chapter 13, verse 24 through 30. The word Jesus used for weed, when translated into English, or in the English language, is darnel. And it's a plant that looks identical to wheat when it sprouts and begins to grow. It too has seeds that look like wheat. But unlike the nutritious wheat that has seeds, the darnel seeds are poisonous and are not edible. And when the darnel seeds ripen, they grow what is referred to as a beard. And then it becomes obvious to know the difference between the wheat and the poisonous weed. So we find in this parable there are two different kinds of seeds. And it is clear that Jesus wants his listeners to know the difference between what is good and what is harmful. He wanted them to know the difference between good seed and imitation seed. We also learned that there are two different kinds of planters. Now, after Jesus finished telling the story, Matthew says, he left them, the crowd, and he went into the house. And the disciples came to him and said, explain to us the parable of the wheat in the fields. Matthew chapter 13, verse 36. Now, Jesus did not explain all of his parables, but in this case, he gave a private interpretation of the parable to his disciples. Jesus answered them by saying, The one who sows the good seed is the Son of Man. Matthew chapter 13, verse 37. Jesus referred to himself as the Son of Man over 300 times because it is as the Son of Man that Jesus relates to us as human beings. Ezekiel used the term son of man to help those who would live after his time identify who the Messiah is. When Jesus said, the one who sows good seed is the son of man, 
Jesus clearly identified himself as the promised Messiah that the old prophets spoke about. Now, just as there are two kinds of seeds, good and bad, and there are also two kinds of planters, Jesus is the one who plants good seed, and the devil is the one who plants bad seed. Then Jesus explained that the world is the field. It's the field where the good news is being sown. He said the field is the world, Matthew chapter 13 and verse 37. In this parable, Jesus tells us that good and evil will coexist until the end of the age. In the parable of the seeds, Jesus is the seed, or the seed is the word of God. Jesus said the seed is the word of God. But in this parable, Jesus tells us that the good seed are the ones who are the followers of Jesus. Now we know this because Jesus explained this to the disciples. The good seed is the sons of the kingdom. Matthew chapter 13 and verse 37. And Jesus said, the weeds or those who have the appearance of following him, but are not genuine. The weeds, Jesus said, are the sons of the evil one. Matthew chapter 13 and verse 38. In the parable, there are also two different plans on how to deal with the world, with evil in the world. The friends of the farmer wanted to pull up the weeds, but Jesus had a better plan. Jesus said, let the weeds remain until the end of the age. At the second coming, Jesus said there will be a separation between the sons of light and the sons of darkness. Jesus said, the harvest is at the close of the age, Matthew chapter 13 and verse 39. Jesus said that his angels are the reapers who will gather up the weeds, he said, The Son of Man will send his angel, and they will gather out of the kingdom all the causes of sin and all lawless breakers and throw them into the fiery furnace. And in that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Matthew chapter 13, verse 41 and 42, what somber words. At the end of the parable of the wheat and the weeds, Jesus taught that there would be two final destinations, one in the presence of God without sin or lawlessness, but in the other place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now, interestingly, many people who have died and had uh, afterlife experience have had a glimpse of heaven, and then they've come back to life. And these stories encourage followers of Jesus to remain faithful. But researchers have discovered that some people who have had an after-death or after-life experience report having seen a, having a terrified experience. They report seeing people suffering exactly what Jesus is talking about. And people from no religion or all of the religions of the world, it doesn't matter. People saw some people weeping and gnashing their teeth, suffering, just like Jesus said but they also saw Jesus offering them an alternative place to suffering. And so we read Jesus said, the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Matthew chapter 13, verse 43. So we learn from this parable that there are two kinds of seed, healthy and poisonous. Two kinds of sowers, good and evil. Two kinds of people, sons of light and sons of darkness. Two plans to deal with the evil in the world and two final destinations, one in pain and one in peace. Jesus ended the parable by saying, he who has ears, let him hear, Matthew chapter 13, verse 43. As you've listened to this parable, what has the Lord said to you? If you are already a follower of Jesus, he has a plan, a specific place for you to shine for him. And no matter how many weeds are surrounding you, you can be a positive influence exactly where you are right now. 
you've not yet decided to follow Jesus, we invite you to follow him today. Thank him for presenting you with the opportunity to follow him and spend eternity in his presence. I want to take a few moments and pray. You're in difficult circumstances, facing difficulty. Maybe you're facing persecution. I pray that God protects you and helps you overcome all the challenges that you are facing and going through. We pray for your physical needs and spiritual needs to be met. If you're not a follower of Jesus and have been eating the seeds of poisonous drugs and alcohol, we encourage you today to choose life by choosing Jesus. Ask him to forgive you of your sin and plant you in a place where you can become fruitful for him. One time, a lady who was addicted to alcohol came to me and asked me to pray for her. And after I prayed for her, I left and I didn't see her again. About 10 years later, I was praying for healing in another place. And after the meeting was over, that same lady came up to me and reminded me who she was, that I had asked her, that she had asked me to pray for her. She said, after you prayed for me, I've not had a single drink and I'm completely free of alcohol. Someone listening to me right now might be just like her. If the seeds of poison are robbing you of the life that you wish to live, I break off your addiction to drugs and to alcohol. If you were just set free, I pray that the Spirit of God will fill you with his presence right now. Write to me. And tell me what God has just done for you. Next week, we'll continue studying the parables of Jesus. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk with someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as $1 a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International Incorporated. All donations to Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God. God bless you and fill you with living hope.